We're continuing our studies in Chapter 5 on protein function, and in this lesson we'll be concerned with the conformational change that occurs in hemoglobin to convert it from a low binding affinity form to one with high binding affinity. So let's look at the change that occurs. Here we have these figures at the top of the screen are from the website location given at the bottom. On the left we have the deoxy form of hemoglobin and on the right the oxy form. On the bottom we have a figure from your book illustrating uh, the same thing from a different perspective. So if we look at that deoxy form on the left we see that iron atom is not within the plane of the ring. It's slightly below the ring. It's slightly bowed. Remember that histidine F8 is always in direct contact with that iron atom. However, in this case, without oxygen present, that histidine E7 residue is too far away to make any contact. If we look at the bottom of the screen here, we see the deoxy form in blue and the oxy form in purple. And you see that in the deoxy form, that histidine F8 is further from the ring. Now let's look at the oxy form. So in the figure on the top, here on the right, we have oxygen bound, and we find because the oxygen is bound that histidine and E7 helix can now make a hydrogen bonding contact, and that pulls the iron atom in the plane of the ring. Can you see how flat that is now as compared to the one on the left? Remember that histidine F8 is directly coordinated to that iron atom at all times. So as the oxygen binds and pulls the iron into the ring, that also pulls up that F8 histidine and with it the F helix. And this is illustrated in the figure on the right here. In the oxy form, that's the purple. You can see it's at a clo closer position to that heme ring in the presence of oxygen. The, dis the degree of which that changes is simply by one angstrom. That's 1 times 10 to the minus 10th meters, a very small amount. It would be like moving a 6-foot table only by 2 inches, a very small change. And yet, we're coming to learn that in biochemistry, small does not mean insignificant. And what we'll see is this change, which would relate to tertiary structure, has an effect on the quaternary structure. It's a coordinated effort. Several things are happening at the same time. Remember that oxygen binds, the iron is pulled into the ring, of the, into the heme ring, the F8 helix is brought off, up. So let's see how that relates to a quaternary change. Well remember, in our binding curve for hemoglobin, we saw that there were two different states, a low affinity state and a high affinity state. And so figured, uh, pictured at the bottom of the screen here in a figure from your book, are the deoxy and oxy forms. Remember, it's a tetraber, and so here are the associations of the alpha and beta subunits in three-dimensional space. In the deoxy form, it has a low affinity, and we call that the T or tense state. It's not favorable for oxygen binding. But as soon as that first oxygen binds, it shifts into the oxy form on the right. We call this the R or relaxed state. Now it's in a conformation where it's favorable for oxygen binding. So let's get clear in our minds what hap what's happening. The oxygen binds in one of those four subunits, only one, and that causes the shift into the oxy form. And now an oxygen molecule can bind more readily in the second, third, and fourth subunits because of the shift from the T to the R state. Notice that the protein is always in this T to R transition. There's always that equilibrium present. The binding of the oxygen simply stabilizes it in that R form. So what's actually happening? Well remember the iron is becoming more planar. It fits into the heme ring that shifts that F helix and specifically that histidine F8 residue and that changes things at that subunit interface. At the bottom of the slide here we have a figure from your book illustrating the subunit interface. In blue, we have the histidine beta chain, and in green, the alpha chain. So this would be, in the top of our figure here, the interface between the beta and alpha subunits. So you'll see a histidine residue in the beta chain is connected to between a proline and threonine residue in the alpha chain. Now this is in the deoxy form. Once that oxygen molecule binds, the iron atom is pulled into the plane of the ring, 
the histidine F8 becomes closer to the ring and pulls up that F helix and that causes a shift in this histidine residue on the beta chain. It shifts so that now in the oxy form it's between those two threonine residues. That locks it in that R form, the oxy form, where it more readily binds oxygen. This is the conformational change that occurs and we see that in that change in the curve from the low affinity binding to a steeper slope, a higher affinity binding. You can think of it this way. Histidine is like a ball that's out of its socket. And once that first oxygen binds, we lock that ball into its socket, and now it's in a stable form and more readily binds oxygen. Imagine all of that occurring from that simple one oxygen change. In our next video lesson, we want to see how pH influences the binding affinity of hemoglobin and how that relates to what happens when we breathe. We also want to look at other factors that can influence the oxygen binding affinity of hemoglobin.